84 million years ago. Many modern mammals, birds, insect groups, even the first flowering plants are already there. Dinosaurs are still roaming around. They have around 20 million years left before the asteroid. T-Rex, a fearless hunter, becomes the king of the dinosaurs. In the Earth tilted by 12 degrees, picture our planet as a chocolate truffle. The shell is hardened, the center is viscous, with semi-solid matter. Its top layer, the crust, consists of tectonic plates that are like puzzles. Continents and oceans come on top of these plates. 84 million years ago, the mantle and the crust started rotating around our planet's outer core, then going back. If you'd been able to see it from space, it would have seemed like the entire planet has tipped over on one side. Today, it would have moved New York City to where Florida is. Let's say our planet is like a spinning top. It whirls perfectly if the weight on the top is evenly distributed. But if you move some of the weight to one side, it makes it tilt. It may have been caused by the moving of the tectonic plates and one of them sinking under another. We might be drinking water older than our solar system. Some scientists think the water we have on Earth may have come from ice specks that were floating in some sort of a space cloud more than 4.5 billion years ago. Lakes aren't always peaceful and relaxing. They can also explode. It happens when there are volcanic gases under the surface that can burst, rise to the surface, and cause big damage. The Earth's rotation is slowly going through time. Every year, the Moon gets a little bit of energy from our planet and slowly drifts farther away from it. These two things are making our day longer, but really slowly, around 1.4 milliseconds every 100 years. That means when dinosaurs were around, the day was 23 hours long. Our planet used to be purple. One theory says ancient microbes didn't rely on chlorophyll to absorb the sun, but on different molecules. They absorbed green light and then reflected back a nice purple color. Every time you take a dip in the ocean, remember you're swimming above more than $700 trillion worth of gold. Not on the ocean floor waiting for someone to get it out, but in tiny particles dispersed in the water. The deepest place on our planet is the Mariana Trench, a spot in the Pacific Ocean, 36,201 feet under sea level. But the deepest place that's not covered in the ocean is in Antarctica. Technically, it's hidden below thick and deep layers of ice, goes more than 8,300 feet below sea level. There are 60 tons of dust falling from space to our planet every day. You probably inhale a pretty good amount of this cosmic dust while just going to work. It's dust, small particles from comets, meteorites, and some other space bodies. Dalal, Ethiopia, is the hottest inhabited place on our planet. Between 1960 and 1966, the temperature was 106 degrees Fahrenheit. And even in the wintertime, the temperature goes up to 98 degrees Fahrenheit on average. 8 minutes and 20 seconds. That's the time sunlight needs to travel from the sun to our planet. It's still not that much compared to what it takes for the light to reach Pluto. Five and a half hours. Almost 70% of the fresh water we have in this world is held in ice sheets and glaciers. More than 96% of the total amount of water on Earth is in the oceans. The Earth is like some sort of big magnet. Its inner core is actually a sphere made of solid iron, with liquid iron surrounding it. All those variations and changes in density and temperature create some sort of force, which makes the iron produce electrical currents. They are lined up by the planet's spin, and together, they create a magnetic field. There are many stars in the Milky Way, 100 billion, but way more trees on our planet alone, around 3 trillion. You can tell how old the tree you're looking at is by its rings. They can also tell you more about the conditions of a given year, too. When these rings are thin, there was a drought, while the thick ones say it was a rainy period. Earth is a magical planet where even rocks can walk, at least some of them, in Death Valley, California. They leave trails so you can record the path they've passed. Some of those biggest rocks have left tracks behind up to 1,500 feet long. Smooth-bottomed rocks wander around, while those with rough surfaces tend to leave straight tracks. The world that surrounds us consists of atoms, and they seem to be solid. But 99.99% .99 of them are just empty space. An atom is just a really small nucleus and a cloud of electrons surrounding it. 
These electrons are particles, but they act like waves. They don't exist in one point, but are spread over a range of probabilities and occupy lots of space. Take the empty space in our atoms, and all the humans could fit in a really tight space like the volume of a sugar cube. Australia is slowly shifting north, 2.75 inches per year because of tectonic movements. Australia is one of the top continental tectonic plates that move faster than others. You'd need 400,000 moons to reach the level of brightness the sun has. Sounds a lot at first, but the moon only reflects the light coming from the sun. It doesn't make its own. And even though that's not enough, its brightness depends on the exact angle between the sun, moon, and the earth. The planet we live on used to have two moons, or at least some scientists believe so. They figure the side of the moon that faces the Earth is relatively flat and low, while the other side is way thicker and crustier. The theory says that there used to be the second moon that collided with the thicker side. Some believe there's still a second moon. It could be not a giant space body we see clearly in the sky, but some sort of a small asteroid pulled into the Earth's orbit. Air doesn't mostly consist of oxygen. Almost 78% of it is nitrogen. If you want to see some pretty steep rocks, go to Canada, Auyuitook National Park. It has the biggest vertical drop in Canada, the tallest and the steepest cliff with 105 degrees of overhang and 4,000 feet of rock. A team of four American men finally made it to the top in 1985, although there were 30 attempts for that before. It took them 33 days to get up. The Pacific, Atlantic, Indian, and Arctic are the four world's oceans. The fifth is confirmed to be the Southern Ocean. It's not defined by the continents around it, but by its Antarctic current that goes from west to east. Research shows this current was created more than 30 million years ago when South America and Antarctica had separated. This allowed water to flow around the bottom of the ocean without any barriers. Melting glaciers and ice sheets means more water in the oceans. It adds the extra weight of all that liquid pressing down the sea bottom, making it sink. The Earth's surface looks solid and kind of permanent, but every 500 million years, it goes through a process of regeneration. Tectonic plates crash into each other. Continental crust creates pressure on the oceanic crust, and that pressure activates the volcanoes. Through time, all this results in regenerating and replacing a majority of the Earth's surface, just like our body regenerates skin cells, replacing old with new ones. Out of all planets in the solar system, Earth is the only one with the outer crust that's broken up into huge surfaces we call tectonic plates. This is an important process that allows the formation of oceanic trenches and mountains, and also helps with protecting the Earth. When microscopic planets that live in the ocean are gone, they fall down to the bottom. The remnants go back into the interior of our planet and get recycled, and eventually end up in the atmosphere, protecting us from overheating and turning into Venus, the hottest planet in our solar system. Your car breaks down in the middle of the highway and won't start. A friendly driver pulls over nearby and gets out some jumper cables connecting your car to his. A few sparks and your car comes back to life. And that's how life began on Earth. Sort of. There's a theory that life was jump-started on Earth like this billions of years ago. It all started with clouds in the sky. We've all been there, sitting by the window on a rainy day. You wanted to go out and have fun, but the rain pouring outside made you want to stay in bed and snuggle. Still, the lightning and thunder are keeping you awake. With nothing better to do, you think about how lightning even forms. Like I said, clouds and many other things. You see, when a storm occurs, cold air and warm air meet. The warm air goes up to create thunderstorm clouds, which produce droplets, and the cold air below has ice crystals in it. During a storm, the droplets and crystals have a little mosh pit and move all around. All that bumping and grinding creates electrical charges in the clouds. If you ever replaced batteries on a remote, then you've seen a plus and minus sign on either end of the battery. The plus is where the positive charge is, and the minus is home to the negative one. And just like batteries, clouds have their own plus and minus. The positive charges are kept at the top, and the minus is, you guessed it, at the bottom. So when the charge at the bottom generates enough power, the cloud lets out energy. As the energy travels through the air, it seeks out positively charged objects, like a pole or a tree. 
and when it finds it, the energy is released and lightning strikes. These bolts of lightning can hit anything on the ground or travel from cloud to cloud. And thunder occurs because of the hot and rapidly expanding air. So, billions of years ago, the Earth wasn't quite like today. Thunderstorms were a lot more frequent than now, and life was still in its beta phase of things. These lightning bolts may have been the key to kickstart life by producing one of the most important minerals for life, phosphorus. DNA, RNA, and cell membranes wouldn't exist without it. It's essential in all stages of our life, from growth and mobility to reproduction. Everything that makes up who we are is in our DNA, those twirly things with proteins latched onto them. So what do lightning bolts and phosphorus have to do with each other? Does phosphorus flash in the sky whenever a thunderstorm happens? Not really. When lightning strikes the ground, it creates something called fulgurites, or in English, glassy minerals fused in the heat caused by the lightning. And when they appear, they take on the shape of the lightning bolt when it strikes the ground. Some new studies suggest that fulgurites could release phosphorus when dissolved in water. When doing so, phosphorus is able to form biomolecules, which help in forming life. Back then, volcanoes were also pretty big on erupting frequently. So with ancient hot springs, you'd expect lightning to strike down nearby and produce fulgurites next to those hot sources of water. Scientists were able to estimate that during the early days of Earth, one to five billion lightning flashes were able to occur. So in the next billion years or so, we can expect one quintillion lightning strikes. Yeah, that's a lot of zeros. With all those flashes and strikes, phosphorus was able to grab its chance to start life when dissolved in water. And of course, not just phosphorus, but a mix of many chemicals and minerals were needed to perfect this recipe. Another theory on how life began on Earth starts all the way in outer space, far away from our little blue planet. Flying through the vastness of space were meteorites. Life on Earth began roughly four billion years ago, and these meteorites were busy flying all over the place, with many of them hitting Earth in its earliest shape. Scientists claim these meteorites carried chemicals essential to creating life. Some of those important ingredients were carbon-based compounds, including sugars and amino acids, and they needed wet and dry cycles to bond on a molecular level to finalize the process. So once life was injected into Earth, we got to see the first organisms that were around 3.7 billion years ago. Keep in mind, there wasn't much oxygen floating around or in the water compared to now. But these microscopic organisms, or microbes, left their mark with a certain carbon molecule produced by living things. But life as we know it today wouldn't happen without oxygen, that invisible element that keeps everything alive. So around 2.4 billion years ago, these microbes began changing and became Earth's first photosynthesizers. They made their lunch and dinner using water and the sun rays while releasing oxygen in the process. With many of these new organisms, the rise of oxygen made the environment harsher for microbes, but it was starting to become the baseline for life's groovy track. A new party popped out for those who could dig oxygen. You see, mammals and other organisms have multiple cell types, bone cells, skin cells, muscle cells, you name it. These microbes were single-celled organisms, so with the rise of oxygen, many of these microbes began moving in with other microbes. I don't mean being roommates in a shared apartment. They actually merged with other microbes to become multi-celled organisms. Pretty clever, huh? Fast forward a couple billion years, and we have some of our first animals to ever exist. So actually, around 800 million years ago, the oxygen levels in the ocean and seas still weren't as high as they are today. But one of the earliest creatures on Earth were sponges. Scientists were able to determine this by studying DNA on rock samples dating back to when sponges first appeared. They also claim that sponges sped up the rise of oxygen levels by eating bacteria, removing them in their decomposition phase. Then, around 580 million years ago, more creatures began to appear. The oxygen levels were starting to be acceptable for life to flourish, and many other bizarre-looking creatures inhabited the ocean floor. 
Even the oldest kind of jellyfish were around. They looked like tiny aliens from another planet. I wouldn't want to find any of those in my drink. And around 40 million years after the end of that period, many of these strange creatures began to disappear. It was then that scientists were able to find evidence of worm-like creatures that were able to burrow in the ocean floor. This is probably one of the first signs of evolution for survival. Then, around 530 million years ago, evolution cranked it up a notch. There were many new creatures out there with new and never before seen body parts. Shells and spines and other body parts allowed some of these new animals to further survive and burrow their way around the ocean floor. And shortly after, a couple of million years, the first true primitive vertebrae appeared in something that looks like an eel. This was the creature with the first backbone. Over the next million years, many of these animals began to form skeleton-based and cartilage bodies. And after much splitting, amphibians appeared and four-legged animals began to walk the Earth's surface. It's also worth noting that there were many mass extinctions that happened along the way. But in the end, life kept evolving. And with many plants and animals emerging, the landscape was changing in the process. Many natural disasters occurred along with ice ages that froze the land and seas. To add to the overall chaos, plenty of volcanic eruptions and earthquakes continued to change the look and landscape of the Earth. The first primates emerged around 4 million years ago. And ever since then, apes and monkeys began to branch out into their own category until humans eventually came into the picture. By understanding these theories, scientists are able to observe other planets with similar conditions. We could actually witness the birth of life on another planet. Of course, this would take billions of years to happen, but I wouldn't want to miss it. There's a giant ghostly hand that stretches across space. Its eerie fingers are reaching for a glowing red cloud that looks like molten space lava. Although it looks like a scene straight out of a sci-fi movie, it's 100% real. The hand was formed after an enormous star collapsed in a huge supernova explosion. The boom created a new star that is bursting with energy. The energy given off by the star is so big that it caused debris from the explosion to swirl around it. This is what created the supernatural-looking hand. The hand is so big that it stretches a colossal 150 light years. As for the lava-like structure it's reaching for, that's actually a huge gas cloud. So, while it looks spooky, it's completely harmless. And you can go to sleep tonight without worrying about a giant ghostly space hand scooping you out of bed. There's a bizarre star hidden in the depths of space that seems to randomly flash on and off. It's known as Tabby's star, and its light dims at super irregular intervals for really odd lengths of time. There have been so many theories about what's causing this, from meteor showers to outer space interference. The comet shower idea was quickly debunked. Dust from comets, which would block the light, goes away after a couple of months. Tabby's star fades slowly over decades, so the timing just doesn't add up. It can't be down to planets either, as no planet is big enough to block that much light from a star. After years of speculation, scientists have finally found an explanation for the strange phenomenon. The dimming and brightening are actually a result of space dust. A ring of dust surrounds the star, which often temporarily blocks its light. On day 8 of its mission in 2019, China's lunar rover discovered something really strange on the far side of our moon that caught the attention of the entire world. While navigating a path around a bunch of lunar craters, it spotted something really weird lurking inside one of the moon's holes. It was a colored substance, just like gel, that we'd never encountered before. The curious material was a rich dark green color and glistened like diamonds. After a year of analyzing the foreign substance that measured 20 inches by 6 inches, the scientists finally came to a conclusion. The glistening effect seems to come from glass. In space, it usually appears as a result of lunar impact melts. This means that it's most likely from a comet or rock that has hit the moon and melted upon impact. But while it's likely that the strange substance is just melted rock, scientists aren't 100% sure. This is because the pictures were captured under bad lighting conditions, and there were a bunch of other factors that badly impacted the quality of the images. 
So the jury is still out on this one. There's a huge space cucumber floating through the galaxy, and no one really knows where it came from or why it's there. Ok, it's not exactly a cucumber. Or a pickle. It's more likely a super elongated rock. Scientists think it may be longer than half a mile, but only 540 feet wide. It's traveling so quickly that there's no way it's bound by our sun's gravity, meaning that the strange object was formed somewhere outside of our solar system. We don't even know how long it's been wandering through space. It's estimated that it entered our solar system during the Victorian era, but who knows where it had traveled before then. For years, we've been told there are eight planets in our solar system. Nine, if you count Pluto, which got kicked out of the club some years ago. But that might all be about to change. There may be an enormous secret world lurking in the midst of our system, which scientists are calling Planet Nine. This undiscovered planet could be way out past Neptune. There are seemingly unexplained clusters of orbits there, and this hidden ninth planet would explain this. The planet, if it exists, would be 10 times the size of Earth, take at least 10,000 years to orbit the Sun, and would sit over 200 times further out than our home planet. This is why it's been so tricky to identify, as it's almost impossible to take a picture of. In 2019, 30% of the area that the planet is likely to be in had been searched. It will take at least another two years to cover the remaining area. In the meantime, we'll be waiting on the edge of our seats. Mm, no. Strange radio waves are beaming down on Earth, and scientists are baffled. These fast radio bursts are sudden, unexplained, and last just milliseconds. We first picked up the weird signals in 2007, and scientists have been scratching their heads ever since. They appear to be coming from outside the Milky Way, millions of light years away. For us to pick them up from that far away, they must be emitting more energy in a fraction of a second than the Sun does in 80 years. Most of these signals only came once, which would have made identifying them much easier, until this all changed in 2017. In August, a signal was picked up that repeated 93 times, ruling out speculation that the signals were being caused by random one-off events. To this day, we still don't know what's causing the signals. Back in 2014, NASA captured a surprising picture of the sun that showed that it might like to play dress-up. A brilliant storm of magnetic fields caused the sun to look like a flaming jack-o'-lantern. Even weirder is that the image was captured on October 8th. It was possible because of something called active regions. These are basically areas of the sun that have greater levels of light and energy. This is what gives the flaming look in the images. The light forms two eyes, a nose, and a wide, jagged, smiling mouth. Fortunately, this look was just a coincidence, and there isn't a giant pumpkin-carving enthusiast lurking in the depths of space. Hey, I want to know, is this a trick or treat? Space fans spotted what appeared to look like a spoon on the surface of Mars. It was half covered in dust. They noticed it after images from a Mars rover had been released. As spooky as the suspicious silverware may sound, it was just a trick of the light. The spoon is just a regular old rock, albeit in a slightly odd shape. The play of shadows in the photo made the object look even more spoon-like. Maybe there's a dish nearby that the spoon ran away with. A cosmic eyeball floating somewhere among the stars is no regular-sized eye. It measures an incredible 660 miles across. One of Saturn's moons, Tethys, has become a bit of a celeb to space fans. The spherical moon sports a large crater that makes it look exactly like a giant interplanetary eyeball. There's even a set of peaks inside the crater that look like an iris. Saturn has a gang of 60 moons in total, and Tethys isn't the only one that looks like a random Earth object. Prometheus looks like a potato, Atlas resembles a pita bread freshly served from a Greek restaurant, and Mimas even looks like some villain spacecraft. And then there's this. There's a giant cat's eye right in the middle of space. Its official name is NGC 6543, but that's kind of long and boring, so most people call it the Cat's Eye Nebula. And it's actually one of the first nebulas to have ever been discovered. Like other nebulas, it was formed by a star that shed its outer layer of gas. The gas floated off and produced this amazing and intriguing structure. 
The star fires off this layer of gas every 1,500 years. Each time it does this, it creates a spectacular new dust shell. Hey, don't get me started on gas. <laughs>